Hi, I'm Jo from JH Leather and in this Be The Maker video, we are going to be focusing on a beginner bifold wallet. So if you are just getting into your leather craft journey or are about to take the plunge, this is going to be a great little project for you to do. So it's going to be available as a PDF pattern pack download, an acrylic template, and for those of you who aren't quite ready to take the plunge into leather craft or just like a taster, or you just want to have a go at creating yourself a bifold wallet, it is also going to be available as a premium DIY leather craft kit. And links for all the different options will be available in the description. So let's get started. So once you have your patterns, we can start transferring them onto our chosen leather. Now I like to cut my leather down to a more manageable size first and then transfer the patterns over, including the maker's marks. Once we've done that, we can then start cutting out. So I cut all the straight edges first before cutting the rounded corners using this nibbling technique as seen in the video here. And on the T-slots, I like to cut out from the corner along those lines. And all the information about how much of each piece you are going to need are included in the information pack with the downloads. And once we have all our bits cut out, we can start doing our edge beveling. Again, all the information on that is included in the information pack. But what we're going to do is start with the T-slot and do the two short sides and across the top on the nice grain side. And then we're going to flip that over and just do the long straight edge at the top of the T-slot on the flesh side. For our front pockets, we're going to go all the way around the nice grain side. And then on the flesh side, we're just going to do that top straight edge, which will be the opening edge once assembled. For our pocket backing, what we want to do is mark where the top of the T-slot is going to sit once assembled, and then edge up and around that to the point on the other side. On the flesh side, what we're going to do is just edge that one straight edge. Now on our outer wallet, we can do the whole of the nice grain side. And on the flesh side, we're going to edge just that top side, which will be the opening side. So that is where the stitch mark points are very close to the edge. And we're just going to edge along there. On the internal part of our wallet, what we're going to do is either using our patterns or lining up our pocket backing, we can mark where they are going to sit. And then we're going to edge in between those points. Now we've done that, we can start doing our staining and polishing. So we're going to stain everything that we have just cut out and we're going to polish the edges. And what you can also do at this point is add a hot crease line around each piece. And I like to have mine set at about 1.5 millimeters. Now we've done that, we're going to finish preparing our T-slots. So we're going to draw the line in on the bottom of our T-slots by setting our dividers to the line on our patterns and then setting our dividers to three quarters of an inch or 20 millimeters. We can then draw in our score line on the back. We can follow that then with a stitch groove. Now what the stitch groove is going to do is just give us a start slash stop location for our skiving. And you can either use a French shave for that and reduce the thickness that way. Or you can choose a paring knife and skive with that. Now I chose to use the paring knife as my French shave was just not getting on with the flesh side of this leather that I was using because it was incredibly tough. If you are using the French shave, you can just sort of shave line at a time. But if you're using the paring knife like I am, what I like to do is actually score a line across the T-slot or the leather that I am skiving. 
and then follow that and reduce the thickness as I go. And what I'm going to do is actually go line by line and build that scythe up to the where I need it to start from. And you will need a very sharp tool for this, regardless of if you're using the knife or if you're using the French shave. And once you've done the first part of your skiving, you can go over it again and reduce any lumps and bumps that there may be. Now we've done that, we're going to use a leather rougher, or if you don't have that, you can use a scratchel. We're just going to rough up the areas where our pockets are going to be stuck to our pocket backing. And this is just going to help everything stick together. So we're going to rough up the area where the bottom of the T-slot is going to be. And then we have marked on where our T-slots are going to sit. So we're going to rough up to just below that point, just to make sure we don't see any of our roughing. And then we're going to go around the other three edges. Now we've done that, we can start gluing. So we're gonna glue our T-slots in first. So we're gonna glue along the T-slot location on our pocket backing. And then we also glue on the back of our T-slot. And once your glue has gone off and is nice and sticky, you can then put your T-slot in place, making sure that it is nice and straight on your backing. Once we have done that, what we're gonna do is stitch mark along that line that we marked in earlier. And we're gonna stitch mark this all the way through. That way we're not going to have to use an awl when we do our stitching. We can then stitch that on. Now the stitch marker that I used was quite small at 3.38. So I'm going to stitch every other stitch hole because all this is doing is just making sure that that pocket stays in place. If you're using a larger stitch marker, then you are absolutely fine to stitch every single hole. Once the T-slot is on, what we can do is put glue on our pocket backing and on the back of our front pocket. And then when tacky, we can stick the two together. Once we have the front pocket stuck on, we can set our dividers to the stitching line as marked on our patterns. And we can draw that line in as shown on the pattern pieces. Once we've done that, we can then use our chosen pricking iron and stitch mark this all the way through. And you're gonna want to have one tooth over the top of your T-slot. And again, we're gonna punch this all the way through. We can now double hand stitch this or saddle stitch. And we're gonna start by doing two back stitches. And when we do our back stitch, we want to make sure that they are sort of lying side by side rather than one on top of the other. We are then going to finish with one and a half back stitches so that both ends of our stitching look the same and our threads end up on the same side of our work. If you are using a polyester thread like I am, you can then use a lighter to melt the ends and secure them in place. Now we've done that, we're just going to do some finishing touches on that edge because it's easier to do that now than when it is in the wallet. 
So we're going to sand the edge nice and flush and then reapply some stain and polish it and also get it recreased so it is nice and finished and ready to go. We can then start to assemble the inner wallet. So we're going to mark where our pockets are going to go. And then we're going to use our edge rougher and rough up those edges like we did earlier. We can then apply our glue to both the inner wallet and the back of our pocket. And then when tacky, we can assemble the inner wallet, making sure our edges are nice and lined up. And once we've got that done, we can then draw in that line for our stitches using the marks from our patterns and our dividers. Again, when we stitch mark this, we're going to have one tooth over the edge and we can stitch mark this all the way through. And then we can use the double hand stitching method to stitch those together. Starting with two back stitches and finishing with one and a half like we did earlier. And again, once you've cut your threads on this, what you can do is use a lighter just to melt the ends because we're using a polyester thread. We're now ready to assemble our inner and outer wallets together. So what we're gonna do is apply glue to the inner wallet as well as to the outer wallet. And once tacky, we can then start sticking them together. So we're gonna stick one side in first, making sure the edges are nice and flush. And then we're gonna fold our wallet over so we can line up the edges on the other side because our outer wallet is slightly bigger to take into account the turn that we need to do to get the bifold to actually fold. And again, we want to make sure all our edges are nice and as flush as possible. And hopefully you now have something that looks a little bit like this. And what we can do is start doing some stitch marking. So using our maker's marks that we have already marked onto our outer wallet, we can join these points together with our dividers. We can then follow that with our stitch marker. Now, this is quite thick at this point, so I'm not gonna be stitch marking mine all the way through because the irons that I have aren't really made to go all the way through this thickness of leather. However, if your irons are made to go all the way through, please do so. I am very comfortable using an awl, so I am quite happy not to do this at this point. When we get to the rounded corners, if you have one, it is easier to use a smaller iron, like a two tooth, to go around here. If you don't have one of them, what you can do is actually hold your iron at an angle and slowly go around the corners. Now we have done our stitch marking, what we can do is stitch the final parts of our wallet together. Again, we're going to be starting with two back stitches and we're going to be using the saddle stitch or double hand stitch method.
And once again, when we get to the end of our stitching, we're going to finish with one and a half back stitches so that both our threads are on the same side. So you should now have something that looks a little bit like this and we're going to start doing our finishing touches. So what we're going to do first is sand the edges. Now I'm going to be using my sanding machine for this, but you can sand this by hand. And this is just going to get all our edges nice and level. We can then restain around our wallet. and polish the edges. And then we can apply some Tolkien for that extra sparkle. So we're gonna put a little bit on the edges and then using our polishing cloth or a wooden burnisher, we can get our edges super shiny. We can then go around our wallet once again with a hot crease to get that line nice and crisp. And we can then finish off with our bone folder going into the pockets, removing any excess glue. And you can then start using your wallet so you can start putting the cards in. Now these card slots will start off being quite tight at first, but they will loosen with use. And if they are a bit too tight to start with, you can go around them with the bone folder a little bit more just to loosen them up. So that is it. That is how to create this beginner bifold leather wallet. So I hope you enjoyed watching. And if you did, please click that thumbs up button because that really helps grow the channel. And if you haven't already, please subscribe for more videos and tutorials. And I shall see you in the next video.